This one's going to be for the flavor chasers. From the Golden Greek, the Spring of Miser. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to the Vapor Chronicles. It is a beautiful, crisp, cool Saturday morning and I'm really just sitting here having a nice hot cup of coffee, tasty vape, and I'm here to do a review for you. Uh, something new, something different. This device was sent to me for free for the purpose of this review from the Golden Greek. Now if you don't know the Golden Greek, you can check out some links below. Uh, beautiful, high-end, very, very sought after, and pretty much praised by everyone that's ever received them, uh, tanks and mods from Greece. And I was contacted originally by Emio on Facebook, and he said, oh, I have this innovative new product, and I checked out the video, and I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen anything like it. So I said, send it over, I'll take a look, and I'll do a review. So here we are. I've had about a week and a half to play around, do some builds, um, really not even do some builds, but spring it up <laughs> and uh, you'll see what I mean and wick it up and I've vaped different VGs I've put it on you know mechanical mods like this one from Beyond Vape um, I've also had it on the Vapor Flask um, I've had it on the die codes it's been a hell of a fun experience getting used to this new this new innovative uh, tank and I'm gonna share it with you so let's have a sip of coffee and then we're gonna dive down and then we'll take it for a vape Let's dive in. Here's the outside of the package as it came shipped. It says ESG on the outside. This is leather. Um, so you just open it like so. And you get a little bag. I'm not really sure if this is how the, the final product is going to be shipped or not, or if this is just a sample. So let's take this out. So not to make this confusing, but let me kind of explain what we have here. There is a tank called the Tillamajos. It's an RTA, and it was uh, developed by Emeo. And they have a V1, they have a V2, they have a V2+. Plus. And basically, these tanks are very modular, and there's upgrades in different parts and different drip tips and different chimneys and different bases and air flows and all different parts, and they're all removable and a lot of the parts are interchangeable. I don't have any of the previous versions, but this, I believe, if I've done my research correctly, is the V2, the Tillamajos V2. Um, 22 millimeters in diameter, and it has the drip tip that is part of the chimney. It's all one piece, but there's different options that have two-piece chimney with a drip tip that's removable. There's a two millimeter center post. There's a two and a half millimeter center post. Um, I'm tr going to try to give you all the information that I can, and I'm going to put some links below. But since this is a Greek company, and you know, I don't really have a ton of experience with it, uh, I'm doing the best I can to fill you in all, all the information that I have. Okay. So this version that I have, let's zoom in. You can see the uh, GG is engraved, engraved into the drip tip. Now this tank is plexiglass, and I had sent um, Emio a message, and he had informed me, and his answer was, there are liquids that can break it, but plexiglass is the strongest of clear tanks. It's the most durable after real glass, and uh, he wasn't really sure what uh, liquids break it, but only very few that he's aware of from previous uh, GG users. But remember, they also have a stainless tank that... Um, you can get instead of this so you don't have to have the plexiglass all right you can see in here it's etched with the logo into the actual plexiglass you have your adjustable airflow control nice and tight and here's your 510 So let's break this tank down. Let me show you all the individual parts and then we'll do a build, okay? So the airflow control ring does come off and each part is removable, cleanable, and replaceable. Uh, and they have different finishes for different um, 
you know, if you like brushed or if you like polished or if you like gold, I saw all different types of uh, parts. The O-rings, you know, you could replace also. And um, so that comes off. And then <clears throat> the fill is the top, okay? Now this also serves, since it's one piece, this serves as a sort of a, it raises and lowers the chimney and you can sort of open up the juice channels more and you can also raise the distance of the um, of the chimney from your build to change how much vapor and how much flavor you get. So notice when I do this, there's your channel there. It raises it up and then you can lower it back down again. Just like so. They've machined out a piece for grip in the top here. So you can just grab a hold of this. I usually like to shut off uh, the airflow when I'm filling, so I would just close this off. But you would just twist it counterclockwise and you refill right from the top, just like so, right here. So we're going to take this section off. And these are replaceable and there's tons of different types. There's clear ones, there are smoked ones, um, and they sell them all individually. Next up, you have your chimney, which you can see here with your drip tip. And this is all one piece. As I said, there's other options. All the threading is just butter smooth, beautiful, as it should be. And this comes off. And there's your build deck. Totally different than what you're used to, correct? There's your juice channel. Juice channel. These are three millimeter juice channels. Uh, in the future, he's gonna make four millimeter feeding channels for lower resistance builds. And uh, they also have different, um, and I'll, when I take this apart, I'll show you, but you can really change the airflow with different parts. So this is your, this is sort of like your base or your RBA base in some tanks, but this unscrews and they give you this little, this little brass helper. Okay. And what you want to do is you could just put that right in here. This is about a little bit more than three millimeters from what I figured out. And uh, you can just put it right in here like so, and then twist counterclockwise. That'll start it off and you just unscrew and then this comes out. So if you already have the Tillamahos, this would be the piece that you would buy separately, and that is available. I think the price just for this part here is about $43 to $44 for the rebuildable section. So if we take a closer look at this. You have your positive and your negative post, and you have your airflow coming up from the middle. There's my heater because it's cold out today. So I think this is the uh, two millimeter center post, and they have a two and a half also for more airflow. But if you want to remove this, um, you can grab some pliers and hold this in here and then grab your pliers and don't clamp down on the threads. Uh, I clamp down right on here. Twist counterclockwise, it'll loosen it. And then you can unscrew this. Make sure you don't lose any of your parts. Be careful with that. And that comes off. So this is replaceable with different ones. There's also a little spacer insulator here. And 
then this allows you to remove the parts to clean them. First we're going to take out our positive, and there you are. And then you have your negative over here. And on the negative, you'll see that there's this little plastic, which is an insulator. And this is also, once again, replaceable. And that comes off. And all that you're left with is this. And lastly, you have your base. So let's let me put this back together. And I'm going to skip this part to not bore you to death. And then we're going to do a build. All right. So let's fast forward. Okay. So here we are taking a look at the build deck. And basically what the purpose of this, this is, is to make building simple. So what he's done is he's used stainless steel. This is a 302 stainless steel. And he calls these springs because they're pre-made, pre-spaced, very durable. And he sells them individually. I think they're like 50 cents a piece. And these could potentially last forever as long as you clean them. But they're pre-made. Okay. So really all you do if you want to rewire or re-wick or anything like that is this is three millimeters in diameter so I'm going to use two and a half millimeters to put this on so you just put it on like this and you line it up with your posts okay now you want to do your positive post first and your positive post is and I don't know if you can see this in the video but your positive post is connected to the center air channel it's all one piece here and then you'll see a black line it's not the black line side, it's this, it's the silver side or the stainless side. Okay, so we're going to put this positive post first at an angle and just give it some pressure and it'll pop right in. And then you take the, the other side and then you pop that down and there you go. So you have everything in there. It re retains its spacing. Okay. And once inside, you can see right through for your wicking. And then when I turn on my resistance meter, you can see it's reading 0.76 ohms. Okay. Now, say for instance, you wanted to change the resistance. Well, you pop up your negative side. You can stretch the wire out. Pop it back down again. And you can see the resistance is now 0.51. Now you could also, you know, trim this or cut this, cut the excess. You don't want to have this sticking out, obviously. But it just shows you that, you know, with these springs, you can really change things up and get a different vape depending on what your vaping preference is, if you're using a regulated device or a, a mechanical device. Now, notice here. The resistance is sort of jumping all over the place, right? You want to make sure that when you have your wires that it's not touching the actual area here. You don't want to touch the base itself, right? Make sure there's space on both sides. Now the cool thing is, is that when you wick this, okay, you're not going to deform this spring at all. Okay, you're not going to deform the spring. You can use cotton that's way too thick and you can pull with all your might and you're going to tear the cotton before you're going to tear this because this is locked in place on both sides. Okay. Oh, by the way, so say you wanted to really get crazy with this, take this off and you can grab two springs, right?
So you line up the two springs and you find just like this and you just accordion them together just like so line this up It's a little bit tighter when you do this for the dual coil. Positive, negative. And you can see now that the resistance is much lower and you can still work with no problem. And you can easily just separate your two springs and there you go, we're back to one again. Since it's 302 stainless, it's very, very uh, adjustable and it goes back to its original form very easily. So you have no problem there. And say you wanted to make an adjustment prior to putting it in, well then you could just pull your spring out I'm going to make this man eh, maybe 0.5 with a single so I'm just going to clip some of this off so we made an adjustment we shortened the spring a little bit we want to get lower uh, we want to change the resistance so then we're just going to take our positive put our positive in pull this with our fingernail a little bit just so it lines up connect our channel pull this out and you can see that lowered the resistance 0.57 now all of our spacing is still perfect and you're good all right so this is going to be good for the build that I'm going to do no need to dry fire you don't want to do that leave it just as is and we're going to take our wick now you don't want to overstuff the wick I found because these juice channels uh, are not huge, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do this real good. So this is some cellu cotton, I like to use that, but you can use whatever wicking you like. Keep it nice and fluffy. Pull through. Nice and, nice and loose, but not super, super loose, but loose, okay? So say you have a piece of cotton that's way too big, okay, when you start to pull. Now a normal uh, coil would distort when you go to pull this through. Well, this is going to keep it shaped the whole way through. It's not distorting. Because it's being grabbed on both sides evenly, it doesn't distort at all. There's no weight being put on this. Uh, it's, it's, you could pull this all the way through. And actually, if it was even thicker, you could still do it, and you'd be fine, okay? And what we're going to do is you want to cut this as close to the channel as you can, okay? So I like to actually tilt this up a little bit and just sort of snip at an angle. Tilt this side up. Snip at an angle. And then just trim the excess. You don't want any excess. So I'm going to fluff this up a little bit. And as close as I can possibly get it, I'm going to do and after that, you can see here, then I'm going to take the chimney with the drip tip and I'm going to screw this down, okay? Now notice all that cotton that went into that channel. I don't want that, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to fluff this out and cut off all the excess again. Okay, pop it out as much as you can. You want this juice to flow in there nice and easy. Now at this point, we're going to drip a little bit of juice on here. This is some dead presidents. 
And this is a 60 VG. I found that for me the performance is better with a, a 60, maybe even 70 VG. Once you start going higher, I did do a 90 VG, but um, you can't change the for it's going to dry. This is meant more for flavor, guys. This is not like a huge, you know, cloud chasing monstrous airflow. This is, you know, precision flavor and just enjoying that juice that you're vaping. Gonna suck that juice in a little bit, get a little bit more. All right, so there we go. Then we're gonna put our cap back on. I like to screw this all the way down to start with. Take it off our base. And then we're gonna fill her up. Now you can drip juice right into it, but I'm gonna actually use a syringe just to see how much juice this thing holds. And you can fill this up fast because the juice channels are closed off. So I'm just gonna fill it in. So there's still some space in there. So I would say maybe three and a half milliliters, maybe, maybe three, but that's enough for this. Then you take your top piece back, screw back on. Yeah, I could have fit some more in there. I haven't had any flooding issues. I haven't had any, I mean, really, really easy to use. Um, the drip tip is nice and low right now, but I can unscrew and as soon as I do that, it'll expose the channels. And you can raise and lower depending on how high you want this to be from your coil for different flavor profiles. Okay, you'll see bubbles starting to come up. Give it a couple minutes to soak up and get saturated and uh, you should be ready to vape. What do you think? Pretty exciting. Um, I have to say, this new build deck that he has created with outpost screws, and it's not really postless because there are posts, but you don't have to worry about you know wrapping wires, you don't have to worry about having trouble distorting your, you know, your, your coil when you're wicking. This is definitely going to be for somebody that likes simplicity. The 302 stainless steel springs that he has, they're already made simple, like 50 cents a piece. And uh, I've had the same one in mind for like a week and a half, and I've been vaping it like crazy, and it's holding up perfectly. So I don't even think you're going to have to invest a lot in wires and all that kind of stuff, really just wick. And um, it's just been a really, really good performer. So let's take this for a vape. So I have this, uh, it's reading about 0.5 ohms, but I have it on a Mac. And... Um, let me, let me tell you what I think. So I'm vaping on some chocolate mousse from Charlie Noble, Yo the yogurt line. And uh, with a cup of coffee, the flavor on this thing is insane. Really, really smooth airflow. and just great flavor. The flavor is the thing that sticks out the most. Um, this is the kind of tank that you're not gonna drain all your juice in like two minutes. Um, it's gonna be a nice, smooth, flavorful draw, but for me personally, I'm a little bit more, I, I like more airflow. I think he sent me the two millimeter airflow bottom piece, and uh, I probably would like the two and a half or maybe even if he could make it bigger, um, but the flavor just pops. It's just really, really good. But if you're used to clouds and huge volume vaping, this is not gonna be the tank for you. It keeps up with high VG liquids. You wanna keep your resistance higher though if you're gonna use the high VG liquids because if you start going below like 0.5 ohms, you're probably gonna dry hit just because the juice channels are three millimeters, it's not gonna be able to keep up. I love the fact that you can adjust the height 
So you can have more of a chamber or less of a chamber and it changes the flavor and the heat. And um, the adjustable airflow control, you know, if I tighten this up, you get a warmer vape. more flavor, and um, it wicks perfectly. I mean, I can hold this thing in chain vape. I'll, I'll fast forward this, but I'll show you. So it is really excellent. As you can see, it keeps up, no problem with wicking. It's just easy, it's simple. Top fill, you just grab the top here, unscrew, fill it up. This is not really a new tank. This is a update to an existing tank and the original tank is called the Tillamajos. You can break this thing down. There's different uh, tank sections. There's different uh, top fill pieces, different drip tips, two piece chimneys, one piece chimneys, uh, different things, different logos, different airflow control, different airflow bases, um, you know, limitless customization. And this is really the tank that you're gonna keep and you're gonna upgrade it and get different parts for. You can bring it down and clean it. It's built for the long term. If you have the original Tillamajos V1, with the AD base, the Tillamajos V2, or the Tillamajos V2 Plus, around $43 US for the, the base part to upgrade your existing one. I took a look at the websites that I was given links to, and uh, I didn't see the entire kit for this. I, this is brand new, and, and from what I could gather, and this is just from my experience looking this up, it seems like this is not a huge produced item like, you know, uh, an Atlantis tank or something like that. This is a niche item that's not produced in such huge numbers that it's going to be available on every corner brick and mortar store. It's a specialized item, limited release. Um, finding stock in it might be a little bit challenging, but I put some links below for you to look into trying to get a hold of it. From what I could gather, you're looking at about a hundred bucks for the tank. Pricey, okay? This is not going to be, you know, a cheap entry level tank. It's built well. Everything in it is is well put together, but you're gonna pay a premium price for the innovation. So one of the greatest advantages that you have of this is that it uses these springs. The springs are pre-made and you can pick them up. They're very inexpensive and they're very easy to swap out, put new ones in, change your resistance, very flexible. That's the benefit. Now, could you buy some 302 stainless steel and make your own springs? I'm sure, but for the 50 cents price point for each spring, I don't think you would need to. I don't think you'd wanna go through the hassle. This was designed for simplicity in mind, and that's really what he was shooting for. And uh, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pros. This thing sips juice. It's not going to suck juice down really quick. So if you're on a juice budget, this might be for you. Original, innovative, and really groundbreaking in terms of what it, what it does. But it's not for everybody. Super, super easy to build, make adjustments, wick. It's durable. These springs are ingenious, and uh, it works really well. I haven't had any connectivity issues, no issues putting in the springs, taking out the springs, cleaning the springs, wicking it. Um, it just, it works perfectly. This thing is modular, so every little piece on this whole entire thing comes apart, can be cleaned, can be replaced. The build quality is second to none. All the threads, all the seams, the machining, uh, the top fill, everything on this thing is precise and really beautiful to behold. Lastly, the flavor is dynamite. If you're a mouth to lung vapor, if you're even a, even a direct lung, I mean, I can lung hit this. If I open up the airflow all the way, So you get really good vapor production, but this is definitely more of a flavor chaser tank. This is not for cloud chasers. There's a lot of other tanks out there that are a lot cheaper that are gonna produce bigger clouds than this. This is for those that like precise, flavorful vape. Now, if I was to vape this regularly, I would probably raise my nicotine level up from three to six, uh, just because I'm so used to having airy, huge vapor production tanks that I would probably need some more nicotine in my liquid. Now let's talk about the cons. The first con, and I need to point, put it out there, and it is the price. So this is gonna be in the upper price point range, so you better have a budget, and if you're into premium, high-end products, this is gonna be for you, and if you like value, there's a lot of other options out there that are more affordable than something like this. 
I personally would like to have the juice channels bigger. Uh, I'd like to build to a lower resistance level and be able to have it keep up with wicking. So the juice channels are a little bit tight. Um, it's not that it dry hits, you just have to make sure that you, you, whatever resistance you put in, I wouldn't go below, like for me, with higher VG liquids, you wanna make sure that you keep your builds around 0.5 and above. Cloud chasers need not apply. This is not gonna be a cloud chucking tank, competition tank, nothing like that. It is a mouth to lung or direct lung flavor chasing tank. Personally, I would like to have a little bit more airflow. The airflow that it has is smooth, you know, definitely feels good. To give you an idea of what it's like, it's more than a Nautilus Mini, but not open, airy, breathing type airflow, okay? Uh, depending on the juice that you vape, and I can't tell you what juice that is, but a lot of the citruses and the cinnamons have been known to be problematic with plastic tanks. If you're worried about that, they do have uh, s solid sections that um, have no juice visibility, but that definitely would correct that problem. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy your Saturday. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in picking this up, you can click the links below. I'll see you here real soon.